Right, so welcome back to a new one on Bitwig. And on this one, we need to talk about the Curves LFO. So on Bitwig 5, the major thing that we get is the MSEC. We get it as a modulator, but also you get something that calls Curves LFO, which uses the same multi-segment envelope generator. So I'm going to be clicking right here and I'm going to look it up. So it's going to be curves. So this is what we get. So if I map it to something, maybe the cut of something obvious, we can really see how it moves. All right. So the curves modulator uses the MSEC engine. If I click on this uh, tiny little drawing, what you get is the the MSEC. And right here we can do whatever we want. We can draw our own LFO and that's, you know, the main point of the curves LFO. So we can resize it, make it smaller, make it bigger, depends on you. And you have a lot of options and this is what we are going to be talking on this, uh, you know, this video. I'm going to show you how this works and how to how to draw your own uh, LFOs. All right, so if you wanted to, you can select everything just like I'm doing right now, and you can just press delete and you will be starting right from the scratch. And how this works is that you need to add points and create your own envelope. If I do something like this, and you know what, I'm gonna be playing a single note clip I have right here at the back. And remember, we are uh, attaching this modulator to the cutoff. So whatever we draw right here, we can add different points and then just move them around and create our own envelope. I get all of this is just pretty obvious, but you know, it's a tutorial, so I need to go through each little thing. So as you can see in the background, you have a grid, and it, this section is going to be right here. You have the snap, and then this is going to be the grid size. If I go up, we get more brick points, and if we go on the other side, you get the uh, you know the y axis. It's going to be x, and then x this one, and the other one is going to be y. I'm gonna maybe go to the default one, which is one was 16. I'm gonna go to something simpler, maybe 16 or even maybe, maybe maybe less. Now the thing is that the main point that you have right there at the back, you know, the grid, is that when you move the points, they're gonna be snapping to the tiny little corners that you have right there. That's why you get the grid. This is the main point of the snap function. If you disable the snap. Now there's no snapping going on. You can freely move whatever it is that you want. Again, that's the point, right? There's no snapping. But if you enable it back again and you move it, you can snap it. Now you have all the tools just to make this easier. I'm using the selection tool, but you can use the pen tool and just, you know, draw whatever it is that you want right here. Now all of this depends on what you're doing right here because if I if I disable the snap, it's gonna let me you know go a bit more crazy. But if you have a you know very small uh, grid, it's just you know a little bit more complicated. Now then you have other options like the predefined values, like doing this, and this, and this. It's very simple, and all of this depends on the snapping and what you have in the back. Right? So that's why the snapping and the grid are just, you know, very important. It's like your main map. Or your guide, let's say. And you have all the shapes. Like this one. And then maybe I want to use this and I can do something like this. Super interesting curves. That, that's, that's the main idea behind this one. That you can create very created, creative curves. Maybe I want to do something like that. And you can easily do it. Maybe an inverted saw. Yeah, why not? Triangle. Yeah, sure. Cool, right? Now, by default, the curve is going to be bipolar. So it means that it goes up and down. You can go into positives or maybe you can go into negatives. If you don't want that, by clicking this button, it's going to Disable pretty much everything is just going to be unipolar. It's just going to go up from here. And if I maybe do something like this, that is, it goes. I made a mistake right there. There you go. It goes from the center point and then up, and it's not going down. If we make it bipolar, it's going down and then crossing the middle point and then going up. All right, maybe you already know about this. It's just, you know. 101 uh, synthesis or maybe LFO 101 and you already know but you know if you're starting this is something that you must know 
Now you still have other cool options. If I right click and you want to start from the scratch because you d did something and you don't like it, you have more options right here. We're gonna go through this ones in a minute, but you have the reset curve. This is gonna give you just a triangle so you can just start over. Right, and I'm gonna be going, and notice that it's resetting pretty much everything. I'm gonna reset and it's resetting the snap as well. So you're starting from the scratch. So, okay, so when we move things, I'm gonna bring more. When you move thing, things, it's going to a point, it's going to snap to the grid. What if you want to keep the snapping, but maybe for some curves, you just don't want to? Maybe for this one, I wanted maybe right here, somewhere in between. So uh, what you can do, you can hold the shift while you're holding, you just move it and it's gonna disable the snapping for that, you know, point. You can put it wherever you want while holding shift. If I release shift and I move this, it's going to snap by default. Right. But holding the shift, it will not snap at all. It will not snap at all. Cool. Now, another thing that you can do is that with the control, when you drag point, it's going to move the following points. So let's say I have a lot of different points right here. I want to move them all when I move the first one. So if I hold the control and move this one, notice that they, they are all moving when I move the first ones. So yeah, it's just moving the following points. And I'm doing this by holding the control. Another thing that you need to notice is that um, when I move this, I'm holding control, but it's snapping to the grid. If you want to disable this, shift and control at the same time, and it will just do the same thing, but it will not snap. Right. So the other thing that you get is going to be a bend. I'm going to do something simpler right here. So if you are standing on a point, if you want to create a curve on this one and this one, you know, the previous and the next line, what you can do, you can do Alt or you can do Command if you're a Mac. And by doing that, notice it's just going to select something. So if you stand on a point and you press Command, you're going to be able to drag up or drag down and adjust the shape right there. And this is because I'm standing on a point and I'm just holding the command or the uh, alt and just dragging. But also, what you can do, you can maybe stand on this line because I only want the curve of this one. And I just can do the same thing, hold the command or alt, and it's just going to create a curve for you. Cool. What if you only want to go back to, you know, default? So by doing the same thing, holding the command or the alt and double clicking is going to reset it back to default. All right, so let me just draw something else. I'm gonna be drawing something like this. Another thing that you can do is by doing the control, notice that the icon changes, especially when we are using this shape. So we are standing on this, you know, you know this line, this column. If I do control and then move it up, it's going to just adjust that one. It's gonna be yeah, much easier to adjust this type of shapes. All right, and I'm doing it by holding the control. Still, everything else applies. If I want to do a curve right here, well, it's just gonna be a little bit difficult because we don't have a curve. Maybe I'm gonna need to do something like that in order to have a curve. There you go. All right. And guess what? We have more. If I right click it, we have the different options again. Just these ones are just the same options that you have right here. But then you can copy the curve and then paste it on someplace else. You can paste, of course, and you can reset the curve. But also, you can transform it. If you go to transform, maybe I'm going to do it right here. If I go to transform, you get different options like flipping the uh, curve or maybe just doubling the content. And you know, these are just common options. If you come from Shaperbox or maybe uh, Infiltrator, uh, you have the, all of these options. So this is just a you know pretty, pretty common thing. What if I go to maybe flip or half? And I'm just, you know, showing you how, how this works. Get a mirror. There we go. Alright, so I'm gonna reset the curve and that's it pretty much. Uh, you just select your grid and then you select your tool and you just draw whatever you want. Now, of course, you have 
an option to save it and to save the curves and to load different curves. And now we're going to be talking about this options, you know, the rest of the settings that you have right here. But first at the top right here, you have the open and you have the store. So if you go to the open, you can bring different curves and you know you have a lot of different curves and you can maybe while you're playing it you can audition different curves all right super cool so what if i maybe select this one i'm gonna go right here i want to change it so yeah you know i can do something like that why not and then when you go right there you can save your curve your curve and then maybe select the place and then you can reload it and just use it maybe on a different occasion. How cool is that? All right, so I'm going to be selecting maybe a different curve, something cool, something that sounds smooth. Maybe this one. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to stay right there. So we need to talk about the other options that we, got, we have right here. And most of the options we have right here are just, you know, the usual options we get within LFO. So this one is going to be your intensity control. So if I go down or your blend control, let's say, if I go down, notice that the, the modulation is less, less and less until you get nothing. It's a little bit different from this one. We're going to talk about this one. So this is like your depth or, or intensity. All right. So then at the top, you have the rate. By default, it's always, always, it will be, uh, you know, hertz. But maybe with this control, you can go to the right side. You can go faster or you can go slower. In this case, we are working hertz. So this uh, knob or this, you know, uh, control is very related to whatever you select right here. Because maybe if I select a bar, it's going to be one bar. And I can go down, it's going to go faster because it's less than one bar. Or I can go up and it's going to be, you know, a lot more than one bar. And again, you have different options. Now, if we keep moving forward, then we have this section we have right here. So this one is the smoothness or the smoothing. It says right here, smoothing time. So right now we are doing something to the cutoff and the white dot, it lets you know what the modulation is. So by default, there is some smoothing and this is the control for it. If I go all the way down, whatever is that we are doing right here is going to be applying it right here, but maybe this is just too aggressive. So if I want to smooth it out, I'm going to be going up and notice that now it starts to be a little bit more rounded. If I go all the way up, it's pretty much nothing. So this makes, this, makes, uh, makes the modulation a little bit softer. That's why it's called smoothing time or smooth, smooth control, let's say. Now, if you don't want this at all, you can just disable it from here. This is the enable and disabling option of the smooth. And then the other one is going to be the uh, bipolar, which is the same one that we have right here. And if I click here, it's going to disable it here as well. All right, so it's just the same control. And now the next options are going to be what is going to happen when we are just, you know, working with this. But the free means that it will not reset. So uh, I'm going to be stopping it right now. If I play a key, a key, and I'm playing something with my MIDI keyboard, notice that the LFO will not restart. That's the default behavior. It doesn't care if you're if I'm playing a new key. Now, the other ones are a little bit different. The note, it means that it will restart every time that I play a new key. Now, then you have the sync, which means that it doesn't care if I'm playing new keys, that it's just not restarting. But when I do play, then and only then it's going to restart. If I do it now, it's just restarting. Then you have the other one, which is going to be a groove, which is the same idea as a variation of the of the sync, which is, you know, is going to be groove relative. You're going to follow the groove on play. And then you have the random, which is, as you could guess, random. And this got nothing to do with play. It means that when I play a key, sometimes it's going to be starting from the beginning. Sometimes it's going to be starting from the middle or the end. It depends, you know, because it's random. Now, if I go to the free one, when I play a key, eh, maybe I'm going to go to this one. If I play a key, you have the face. Every time I play a new key, it restarts from the beginning of the curve. But maybe I want to start right at the peak or maybe somewhere in between. So by going up in this number, it means that you're offsetting the starting. That is that now it starts on a different place. 
So there you go. So we are starting right here instead of the beginning. So this is the offset. So I'm going to double click just to go back to the beginning and I'm going to go back to the free mode. And then last but not least, you have the, the poly. So uh, right now, if I play a key, I want you to see the white dot. I play a second key. I'm holding two keys. The white dot is al always the same. It doesn't care. I'm playing four keys right now. And it's because the modulation, the LFO, is mono, right? It's just following all the different vo voices are just following the same instruction. If I go to poly, now each key will follow a different instruction because we are playing keys at a different point in time. So now we have two voices going around. If I play a third one, it's going to be maybe starting on a different place. And what you get is just different voices that are being modulated a little bit differently. That's why it's poly. And all right, so that's it. That's pretty much the whole LFO. Notice that uh, when you're this is closed, you can still maybe go right here, just move around and just select maybe a different waveform. You can't do it from here. You just don't need to open it. Just like, you know, we did before. All right. So it's a pretty, pretty cool device. And uh, Bitwig 5, it's just based their whole update on the MSCG, which is, you know, I believe I believe is just a good decision. It's a pretty cool thing. Now remember, you get the curves, you get it uh, on, on a scroll oscillator, which is the same idea, you know, same engine. And you get uh, the envelopes, which is going to be the segments, which is, again, the same idea. And you have a different module later, which is going to be called segments. If I select it, it's the same idea, you know, that we have on the curves, but, you know, with different, different uh devices. All right, so if you liked all this and now you know how it works, uh, please like and subscribe and see you on the next one.